Welcome to the Game Audio resource, Why is an Unreal Audio Implementation Guide series. In this guide we highlight how to create a basic environment scape, so that the player character has a small area land mass to move around on. We use the default free models available to create a simple two-story house structure, and outline various basic processes you will need to build an environment for audio implementation. Please note, the aim of this guide is to build a quick map environment that we can associate audio content to. There are many more advanced processes that are used to build a map environment that we do not cover in this guide. Before you begin, it is a good idea to plot out a grid of how you want your map to be laid out. Using software like MS Excel, you can use the cells as reference to Unreal Landscape tiles. As shown on screen now is our original quick mock-up we created for the map we build in this guide. First we create a default level we can use for all updates this guide series highlights for implementation. In the Unreal toolbar, select File, then New Level. In the pop-up window, select the default option. Once the new level loads, save the map via the toolbar. Save Current. In the Save Level As window, right-click the panel on the right of the window. Then select New Folder. Name it Maps. Then double-click the folder to enter the folder path to save the new map. At the bottom of the screen, in Name text box, name the new level to be saved e.g. map underscore wise underscore demo. Click the Save UI button to create the new level in the Content Browser Content Maps folder. Before we place any object into our new map, we quickly overview three very useful tools you will be using to move, rotate and scale objects in the world map. The three tools used are located in the top right of the World View window. XYZ Handle this allows you to move a selected world map object in 3D space, up, down, left, right, and forwards and backwards. Rotate handle. This allows an object to be turned a full 360 degrees in the world map. Scale handle. This allows an object's scale size to be increased or decreased in the world map. Or you can use the details tab, scale values of a selected model. In this step, we add a basic base landscape area with different material textures to craft the floored area the player character can move on. First, we remove the default floor tile. Select the gray floor tile, then click the keyboard delete button to remove the landscape tile. In the modes tab, we will now place a basic landscape floor tile for our new map. Select the landscape tab option. Under material, assign the texture material as m underscore ground underscore grass. Reference back to the original floor grid layout at the start of this guide. We shall create an area of tiles 13 by 12. Under section size, change the value to 7 by 7 quads. Under sections per component, change the value to 1 by 1 sections. Under number of components, change the two box values to 13, then 12. Then click on the Create UI button. Next we will select a few landscape tiles and change them to a different texture material. Under the Landscape tab, select the Manage option. Under Landscape Editor, make sure the options are set to the Selection tool. Now select the centre for landscape tiles for the location on the map where the house will be placed. Use the original Map Grid screenshot to work out where the tiles will be on the map. In the Details panel we are going to override which texture material is used. Navigate the Content Browser hierarchy to Content, Start Content, Materials. Then drag the M underscore rock underscore sandstone material onto the Details panel, Landscape Component, Override Material Option List. Deselect the four selected landscape tiles. You should now see the new material assigned to only the four middle tiles. Use the Tile Grid Map screenshot to fill in all floor materials needed to create the ground layout. Where we have mentioned or highlighted bridges and brown boxes, use the material M underscore water underscore lake on those tiles, as we will create structures on those tiles later in this guide. Once you have populated all the floor materials to the landscape tiles, we are now finished with the basic floor. Save the map updates via the Save Current option in the toolbar. We will use the default walls and floor models already created in the default Unreal project to create a small house. Open the map we have created or the one you are working with. Navigate to the Content Browser, Content, Starter Content, Architecture folder. In the Modes tab, change to the Place option. 
drag into the map the model wall underscore 400 by 400. Place it on one edge of the house floor foundation. Then drag in windows and door frames, all of the same size, 400 by 400, to construct the ground floor walls of the house. Ensure all wall boxes are placed tightly together, no overlapping boxes or any gaps between each wall piece. Next we build our first floor. Drag in the floor underscore 400 by 400 model. Move the floor box to the height position you wish to have the first floor at. Then continue to drag in extra floor boxes to cover the first floor area. Add three floor boxes over the ground floor entrance at the first floor height to form a balcony. We can now add stairs from the ground floor to access the first floor area. In the modes tab, geometry list option, use any of the three stair model types available to create the staircase. Remove the first floor box tile so the staircase can access the first floor. Next we add the walls for the second floor. A quick way to do this is to select all ground floor walls, then Ctrl plus C to copy the walls. In the World Outliner tab, paste the walls into the list. Then simply drag all copied walls upwards to the required first floor height. Ensure you add a door wall to access the balcony. Then we add a simple flat roof. Again, copy and paste all the first floor tile boxes into the World Outliner tab. Then drag them up to the required height. Replace any missing floor tiles needed for the roof. To complete the base house structure, we will add two pillars to support the balcony. Drag in the model, pillar underscore 50 by 500. Then position it under one corner of the balcony. Then drag in another pillar to support the other corner of the balcony. The basic house model is now completed. In the world outliner list, we have quite a few wall box entries. We will add them to a new folder. Right click the parent list item, named whatever you've named your project as. Then select create folder. Name it structure underscore boxes. Right click the structure underscore boxes folder. Then select create subfolder. Name it house. Drag all wall boxes into this new folder. Now we are at a wall around the edge of our grass island area. Drag into the map the model wall 400 by 200 box. Position it around the grass area. Use the tile map created at the start of this guide to guide you where to place further walls. Back in the world outliner list, navigate to the structure underscore boxes folder. Right click, then select create subfolder. Name it wall underscore small. Drag all the small wall boxes you have added around the edge of your map into the new folder. Save the map updates by clicking on the central toolbar save current option. In this step, we will add basic default material textures to the white box walls and floors we have added to our map. Navigate to the content browser, content, starter content, materials folder. This folder displays all material textures we can use. Simply drag a material texture onto each wall or box you have added to the map. Assign whichever materials you would like to use to all white boxes that make up your house structure. Once you have added material textures to all your wall boxes, save the map updates. There is one foliage plant prop we can add to the map. We will add a simple small bush slash shrub to our map using a multi-place process. Navigate to the content browser, content, starter content, props folder. Locate the model SM underscore bush. In the modes panel, foliage tab, drag the SM underscore bush into the plus drop foliage here box. Then select the model box. What this process does is using circle boxes, when you left click the map floor, a random number of bushes will be placed within the circle highlighted box. Using the grid map, populate one small area of the map with lots of shrubs of various heights. Then save your map updates. As we have our new map layout finished, we can start to place models or props into the map. We will add a simple large rock to the map. Navigate to the content browser, starter content, props folder. Change to the modes tab, place option. Drag the SM underscore rock prop into the map. Then position it wherever you wish to place the rock. Use the handle tools to rotate and move the rock into position. In the world outliner list, under structure boxes, right click, then select create subfolder. Name the new folder, props. Drag the rock prop into the new folder. Save the map updates. 
You can now place as many props as you would like into your map. Obviously, the more you place, the more memory is used. Try to be efficient with where and how you place the props. In this step, we highlight how to build a simple fishing deck that extends out over the water. This process can be used to create various other structure models wherever your creative ideas take you. In the Modes panel, under Basic, drag in the cube box. Using the Details tab, change the scale size to fit the length and width you wish your fishing platform to be. Place the platform hovering over the water, with one small section over the grass floor area. Under the Modes list, drag in a cylinder box. These cylinders will be the supports for the fishing deck. Adjust the cylinder size with the Details tab Scale Values. Place as many cylinders as you would like around the edge of the floor fishing deck area. You can copy and paste each cylinder you add into the World Outliner list to keep consistent placing and sizing. Next we will add stairs to allow access to the fishing platform. In the Modes tab, drag in two cube boxes. Position both boxes as wooden boards or stairs to the fishing ramp. With each box selected in the World Outliner, use the Details tab to adjust the scale size of the two boxes. Now we can add textures to our white box fishing deck. Navigate to the Content Browser, Content, Starter Content, Materials folder. Then drag a material onto each white box that forms the fishing deck. In the World Outliner tab, right click the Structure underscore Boxes folder. Then select Create Subfolder. Name it Fishing Deck. Then drag all parts of the fishing deck into this new folder. Then save your map updates. As mentioned, this process can be used to create other model structures to decorate your landscape. Try creating a bridge between the player starting island and the main island with the house. Copy and pasting the fishing deck model, then moving into the new position is a quick way to implement the new bridge. As the inside of the structure can be quite dark, we will place a single ceiling light prop model and a light source to illuminate the inside of the structure. First we place a model of a light socket into the house structure. Navigate to the Content Browser tab, Content, Starter Content, Props folder. Drag into the map the model SM underscore lamp underscore ceiling. Use the XYZ handle to position the model on the inside ceiling of the first floor. Now we have our light socket, we can associate illumination to the same location. In the Modes tab, Lights option, drag the point light into the map. Position the light source on the lamp model. In the World Outliner tab, right click the Structures underscore Boxes folder. Then select Create Subfolder. Name it Lights. Then drag the point light and the SM underscore lamp underscore ceiling prop into this new folder. Then save the map updates. Using these steps, you can add further light model props to illuminate the inside of your house space. Try using the wall sconces, but use the Modes Spotlight, allowing you to focus the light direction upwards. Within the Details channel, you can change various properties. For example, the light intensity value will increase or decrease the light point brightness. Now we have built our basic map, we need to ensure the player character starts in a valid position. In the World Outliner tab, Locate the item in the list Player Start. Move the Player Start marker to wherever you want the player character to be positioned when the map is loaded. Then save the map updates. Play test the map to ensure the player start position is in a valid location. If the player character falls through the ground when the map loads, you need to raise the player start marker higher above the floor ground surface. The starter content also provides us with basic particle effects we can use. We will use the simple idea of using class boxes to create a small log fire using cylinder boxes. Then place two different particle F effects on the pile of logs to create a small fire and smoke effect. Navigate to the Modes tab, Basic Cylinder option. Then drag the cylinder into the map. Rotate and position the cylinder to the area you wish to have a small fire. Use the Scale Handle tool or the Details Panel Scale Values to adjust the size of each cylinder. In the World Outliner tab, copy and paste this item a few times. Then select and position each cylinder into a fire pit formation. Drag a wooden material texture from the Materials folder onto each log. For example, M underscore wood underscore walnut. Now we have the basic fire pit model, we can add two particle effects. Navigate to the Content Browser tab. 
Content, Starter Content, Particles folder. Drag in the P underscore fire effect into the map. Then position it into the center of your log formation. If you would like more smoke from the fire, drag in the P underscore smoke effect to the same location as the P underscore fire effect. In the World Outliner tab, right click the structure underscore boxes folder, then select create subfolder, name it log underscore fire. Then move all related boxes and the effects into the new folder. Then save your map updates. Your fire pit is now set up and ready for SFX association in later chapters of this guide. To remove any lighting issues or texture tears, like the floor tile edge lines, we need to rebuild the global lighting for the map. In the world view toolbar, select build, then build lighting only. The baking process then starts to process. The process will take a while to do, as the lighting is baked into the level. Once the build process finishes, you will see a pop-up message in the bottom right of your screen, stating lighting completed. You should see all floor texture tears have now disappeared. Also shadows have been properly displayed around the map. You may notice around the edge of the map there appears to be a shadow over parts of the water, forming a circular spotlight around our island. We simply need to address this with a few value changes. In the World Outliner tab, look for the list entry, Sphere Reflection Capture. Ensure the emitter is placed directly in the center of the map. Then in the Details tab, Reflection Capture, Influence Radius, change the value to 10,000. You should now see the sphere be larger than the map and all floor texture tiles visible without any shadows. If you still see any shadows around the edge of the map, simply increase the Influence Radius values to a greater value. Now save the map updates. Hopefully this guide gives you enough information to set up a basic map for the player character to move around in and perform basic actions. How much detail you put into your map is completely up to you. Once you are happy with your map's design, we move on to the wise integration into the Unreal project.